A few days ago, I asked ChatGPT to write me five simple, objective, rules-based strategy scripts, and I also asked it to do some research on the web and find ones that are actually profitable. And ChatGPT gave me five simple strategy scripts. But do these strategies actually work? And are they useful? Let's find out. In this video, we will check how many of those five strategies works and how many doesn't, how good they are, and I will show you a few optimizations I made for the ones that work. And of course, I will share with you the strategy scripts for free. Without wasting any time, let's get right into it. Okay, so this was the simple prompt I used. To this, ChatGPT gave me first an EMA trend pullback strategy, then a Donchian channel breakout strategy, then an opening range breakout strategy, a MACD plus 200 EMA strategy, and finally a squeeze breakout momentum strategy. Now let's copy those codes, paste it to TradingView, add them to the chart, and let's see them one by one if they work or not. The first strategy, the EMA trend pullback plus RSI strategy, works perfectly without any error. Okay, so this is how the first strategy script looks like. This strategy is a double EMA plus RSI pullback strategy. For this we use a fast EMA and a slow EMA, a simple RSI, and we set long limit and short limit values. For stop loss, we are using a simple ATR based stop loss. Now, for this strategy, ChatGPT recommended to use BTC USDT or bigger crypto assets and the one hour, two hour, four hour charts. Now, checking the default settings, the results are not so great. On default, ChatGPT set a fast EMA of 20 length, a slow EMA of 200 length, the default settings for the RSI, 52 for long limit, 84 for short limit and a simple 2 times ATR distance for stop loss with a 1 to 2 risk to reward ratio for take profit. In the properties tab, we use a usual 0.1% fee on each trade and a 2 tick slippage. And on the 1 hour, it took 740 trades, generated negative 18.16% net profit with a 0.777 profit factor. What about the 2 hour? Maybe that works better. Slightly better, but still losing the 4 hour. The 4-hour is again slightly better, but still losing. And on the daily, the daily is just like the 4-hour. It's not good. So that's why I optimized the strategy. Now let's see my optimized settings. Okay, here you can see the results with the optimized settings. Compared to the buy and hold, the strategy easily outperforms it. The equity curve is pretty solid, trending upwards. It has some stronger pullbacks, but overall it is decent. So now let me explain how this strategy works. Let's set the indicators, let's set up the correct parameter settings, and we take a look on a few trade examples. Make sure you are on the BTC USDT one hour chart, then open up the indicators tab. First type in EMA or exponential moving average and add this one to your chart. Then type in RSI and add the relative strength index. And finally for stop loss take profit and an FX ATR, add this one. Okay, for the fast moving EMA, set its length to 30. In the style step, color it however you like. I colored it light blue. And for the slow moving EMA, set its length to 420. And I colored it white. Now, for the stop loss and take profit, we are going to use pretty extreme values. For the X value, which is the period, we use a 5. For the take profit value, 160. This actually means that the take profit level will never be hit. I will tell you later why this works well with this strategy. The stop loss should be set at a 10 multiplier distance. With the RSI, set its length to 165, then go over to the style step, set the upper band, which we will use for shorts, to 75, and the lower band, which we will use for longs, to 25. I also change this color to green and this color to red. So we know which is for shorts and which is for longs. And now let's find trade examples. Okay, so this candle is a valid short entry signal. For a valid short entry, first the fast moving EMA, which is this blue line, should be under the slow moving EMA, which is this white line. This ensures that the overall market trend is trending downwards. And then we are waiting for the price to pull back into those EMAs. First, the price needs to close above the fast moving EMA, the blue line. And then it needs to close back under the fast moving EMA, just like what can you see on this candle. And finally, to confirm the entry for a short, the RSI value needs to be under the short limit level, which is 75. As you can see, it's well under it. So this is a valid short entry signal. Now stop loss, we replace that the upper and NFX ATR, which is at a 10 times ATR distance. And take profit should be at 160 distance down here. 
and I mentioned that with this strategy using a really really far take profit level works well because of one reason. And that is that with this strategy, even if we are in an open trade, each time the strategy prints a new valid short entry signal, the stop loss and take profit levels will get updated to those new levels. What that means? For example, on this candle, we get a new valid short entry signal. The fast EMA is under the slow EMA, the price went above the fast EMA, and then came and closed back under the fast EMA too. Also, the RSI is at a 47 value, which is well under 75, so this is a valid short. As this is a valid short, the script won't open a new trade, instead it will update the stop loss and take profit to those levels. So now the stop loss will be here. And on this candle we get a new valid short entry signal. So we have to update the stop loss again. Now the stop loss will be here. Here a new valid short entry again. So another stop loss update right there. And I promise this is the last one, but here we get another short entry signal, which means the stop loss will get pushed here. And at the end, as you can see, the script exited with a stop loss hit right there. But as no trades were opened on these entry signals, because we have already opened an entry on this candle, the trade was actually profitable. Entry was here and exit was there, somewhere around here. So as this strategy doesn't enter into a new trade on every valid entry signal, if we have an open trade, these new stop loss movements work kinda like a trailing stop loss. But it can move the stop loss upwards, not just downwards in case of a short. That can be a bit dangerous, so if you want to use this strategy, I highly recommend to fix this problem so that the stop loss can only move at the lower level if we're taking a short and only move to a higher level if we are taking a long. Now let's see a long trade. Here is a valid long entry, the fast moving EMA is above the slow moving EMA and the RSI value is 51 which is above the long limit level of 25. So this is a valid long entry right there. Stop loss will be placed here and take profit way up higher. And again just like with the shorts, let's see if we get another valid entry signals or no. And I think yes we get one right there. Because fast EMA is above the slow EMA, the price pulls back under the fast EMA and then closes back above the fast EMA. RSI value is also good, a 55 level which is above 25, so this is a new valid long entry. Now the stop loss would be moved here, but again, here we get a new valid entry signal, stop loss updates to here, then after that this is a new valid entry signal and stop loss gets placed to here. And later on, this is a new valid entry signal, stop loss here. Another valid entry signal, stop loss here. And that goes on and on and on. And I think the last valid entry signal was probably this one. And the stop loss got moved here. And as you can see, the script exited the position hitting that stop loss. So all together, let's see how this trade played out. So we had an entry here and an exit around this level. So this was another profitable trade with around a 1 to 0.84 risk reward ratio. <clears throat> That's all that you need to know about this strategy one. Let's move on to the others. And of course, let's not forget about showing you the after optimization date backtest results because the optimization date was from 1st of April 2021 till 1st of April 2025. So let's see what happens after 1st of April 2025. I set the date to, or yesterday's date, let's set it to 11th. And yes, even after the optimization date, it is profitable. 13 trades, 23% at profit, 9.7 maximum drawdown, 2.6 profit factor. Moving on to the second strategy, with this one I had some problems. After adding it to the chart, unfortunately there were no trades generated. And when this happens, you can try changing the position sizing to higher values, especially if you test the strategy on stocks or indices, as there you have to use bigger position sizing than usual. I tried that, but there were still no trades, so this strategy probably has some problems with its logic. Now in this video we don't try to fix these strategies, the strategies that don't work, as we have 5 strategies to go through, we will work with the ones that are actually working on the first try. Moving on to the third, the opening range breakout strategy. Unfortunately I ran into the same problem just like with the second one, I tried changing the position sizing but no trades were generated. So this one is another failed one. But what about the fourth one? Let's see. 
After pasting the fourth one and trying to add it to the chart, we got an error of request.ema. And as I mentioned earlier, we won't try to fix this problem. In this video, we're just gonna work with the strategies that are actually working. But if you want, you can try and fix these problems. It won't take more than one to respond this probably. And now let's see the final strategy, the squeeze breakout momentum strategy. Surprisingly, this one was actually added to the chart successfully and generated trades. First, as I saw it generate trades, I started optimizing it just like with the first strategy. I found pretty good set of parameters for meta 30 minute chart. But after setting up the indicators needed for the strategy and checking some of the trades, I saw a very dangerous problem that beginners usually miss, and that is called repainting. Okay, so the fifth strategy looks something like this. It has Bollinger Pen settings, Keltner Channel settings, the rate of change settings, and an ATR based stop loss and take profit level. Now for Meta, I used these values. We used an 80,000 order size on a 10K account with a 0.015 USD per contract fee. This value was recommended by ChatGPT. Let me know if you use different values for trading Meta or other stocks. And after optimization, these were the results. Now these results look extremely good. I even was thinking of making the strategy into a premium script or a more complex strategy script with a few more filters and options. But before I started doing that, I went ahead and checked a few trades. Now for this strategy, we use mainly the Bollinger Band and the Keltner channel. This line is the Bollinger Band and this line too. And this blue line is the Keltner channel. Now the main rule for an entry on this strategy is that the upper Bollinger Band breaks above the Keltner channel. And as you can see here, the script entered into a long trade on the open of this candle. Now let's zoom in a bit and you will understand in a minute why is this a problem. So on the previous candle, the Bollinger Bands was under the Keltner channel, so that's not a valid entry. Now on this green candle, just slightly, but the Bollinger Bands break above the Keltner channel. But that is only confirmed after the close of this candle. And what we can see, that the strategy script entered at the open of the candle. That means that this strategy script has a one candle repainting, which can cause huge problems. Without the repainting, the entry should have been on the open of this candle and not the open of this candle. Because until this candle isn't closed, we don't know if the Bollinger Bands will end up being above the Keltner channel or no. And that's why we get so good backtest results. Now I went back to ChatGPT and asked it about this problem and it confirmed me that yes, this strategy has this one candle repaint problem. So if you are new to Pine Scripts and TradingView and coding with ChatGPT all together, make sure to check all the strategies if they are repainting or not. Now I asked ChatGPT to correct this problem and it did that. So I will hide the current script and reveal the corrected one. And now as you can see, the entry was on the open of the next candle. After the close of this candle, when the Bollinger Bands was confirmed to be above the Keltner channel. But with this one candle delay, let's see how the optimized settings performs with this strategy. And as you can see, it is terrible. Well, it's profitable, but nothing compared to the previous one. I didn't start it re-optimizing. I just wanted to show you that this problem exists and you should be very careful when you are coding with ChatGPT. For those who are interested, just quickly let me explain how this strategy works. Oh, and before that, there's another problem with this strategy. The strategy script uses some kind of modified Keltner channel because I tried setting up the same values as it's using. And you can see this middle line. These two lines should be on the same exact level all the time. If I hide the Keltner channel, you can see that there should be the Keltner channel line, but I couldn't set up it to be there. There is one way to set up if you untick the use exponential MA, but then the bottom Keltner channel and the top Keltner channel won't match the strategy's Keltner channel lines. I hope this makes sense. Okay, so for this strategy, you need Bollinger Bands, add this one, and Keltner Channel, add this one. And you will also need another indicator, the rate of change, this one. And for stop loss take profit, the NNFX ATR, add this one. For the Bollinger Bands, set a 12 length, the base SMA type is SMA, STDEV is 4.5. You can do anything you want with the style step. I leave it as it is. With the Keltner channel, again, a 12 length, a 5.5 multiplier. You either have to tick the use exponential MA and you get the lower and upper Keltner channel lines correct. 
but the middle line incorrect. Or if you untick it, you get the middle line correct, but the upper and lower lines incorrect. And for the ROC, 62 is what we should set up. For the NNFX ATR, we set up an 85 length, a 5 take profit value and a 2.5 stop loss distance. And you can change the line styles to step line, so it's easier to see and we don't need the main ATR. I know this chart looks a bit confusing. It's easier to just use the strategy script, but this is how it works. So let's see a long example. This one here is a valid long entry signal. For a valid long entry, first the price needs to be above the Keltner channel basis line, which is this line. The Bollinger Bands should break above the Keltner channel line. So this blue line is the upper Keltner channel line and this red line is the Bollinger Bands line and it break above on that candle. And the rate of change should be above the zero level, just like here. Okay, entry at the close of the signal candle or at the open of the next candle. The stop loss is placed at the NNFX ATR line, the red one, and the take profit to the upper NNFX ATR line right there. And this trade was a losing one. And that is basically the strategy, because we don't allow shorts, only longs. Okay, and now let's take a look on where the first strategy is placed, which has no repainting issues and has a good optimized settings. Okay, this is the strategy ranking spreadsheet where I rank all the strategies I showcase on TradeSmart AI. And the first strategy, which is the EMA pullback plus RSI strategy for the BTCUSDT one hour chart, has took the 48th placement, which is just right before the last one. But don't forget that in this spreadsheet, I already rank strategies that were profitable in the optimization date range. And with its 142% net profit over a four year period, this is all it could have reached. Now always remember that in sample data or the optimization range backtest data does not mean that the strategy will be profitable after the optimization date range. You always need to check how well it performs after the optimization date. This spreadsheet will be linked down in the description, just like with the strategy scripts that I showcase today. Okay, so let's summarize what we found. Asking ChatGPT to generate simple objective PineScript strategies has some potential. Out of the five strategies, only two have worked on the first try, and I think with some more time invested, we could have fixed the other strategies too. After optimizing the first strategy, the EMA pullback plus RSI strategy had decent backtest results, and with some more filters and functions, it can become actually a pretty solid strategy script. Well, what do you think? Should I try fix the other scripts and make another video? Or should I improve the first strategy script and make another video of it? Let me know in the comment section. You can find the two working strategy scripts linked down in the description, but keep in mind that the second one I had to fix, so the backtest results won't be great with that. And that wraps up today's video. If you like this one, don't forget to show some love with a like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you want to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon shop where you can buy more complex strategy scripts, private strategy coding or optimization. If you want to see another profitable strategy, check out this video. Or if you are interested in how accurately can ChatGPT predict future price movements based on candlestick chart screenshots, check out this video. And don't forget to check out my other channel, TradeSmart, where I mainly focus on more complex, highly customizable premium strategy scripts and deep indicator research projects. As always, thank you all for watching, have an amazing day, and until next time, trade smart.